Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at Valkyria Chronicles 3 for the PlayStation Portable. However, this is a very special version as this is the extremely rare English patched version. The game was originally released in 2011 and is by Sega but was never released outside of Japan, which makes this English patched version just all that much more special. So the third chapter in the Valkyria Chronicles saga, but is it any good? Oh yes it's good. Let's have a more detailed look shall we? The game's story is set around the time of the events of the very first game, and is focused on a squad known as the Nameless. This is basically a group of soldiers who have been forced into the Nameless, and who are essentially seen as criminals. If they refuse to follow orders, they face a firing squad, and some of the members in the group are there for pretty trivial reasons, but they're also forced there to be there nonetheless. The story revolves around the main character known as Kurt Irvings, who becomes a squad's leader and helps them become a working squad. The Gallian military then uses a nameless to carry out missions which are either suicidal or questionable at best. The army also uses a nameless as an excuse to carry out several acts which are against the war treaties, such as using nerve gas and a whole host of other questionable methods. When you compare the first game and the second game's story, this game's story is that much darker and focuses on more darker aspects of the war, and how even the Gallian army itself isn't the goody two shoes that it's made out to be in the first and the second game. We see in this game's story that just like in real life, the so called heroes and people fighting for peace and freedom, they're not exactly as they always seem. From the perspective of the Nameless, we see how the Gallians treat Darksons not that much better than the Imperials. While not treated anywhere nearly as badly as how the Imperials treat them, we still see that the Gallian people don't treat Darksons very nicely, or see them in kind regards. This is vital to the game's story as well, because this alone shows why certain acts happened later on in the game's story, which I wouldn't think would play out, but did. The game's story is a very stark contrast between Valkyria Chronicles 2 story, which seemed oddly rather upbeat considering that a mini civil war had essentially broken out and how the main army wasn't getting involved for some particular reason. Or how in Valkyria Chronicles 1 you had Welkin and Alicia come across as heroes of the war, and how Galli was a victim and how they were fighting for freedom. Yet this game shows the awful truth about the war within its own story, because just like that in real life of the events of say for example World War 2, while we have one nation or one country claiming it's fighting for freedom and how it's in the right and yet the other side is always in the wrong, that usually they're not that different from each other, and someone in some way shape or form is being segregated against. It's a very dark, bleak and contrast story compared to the first and the second game, showing how even the Galleon army who are meant to be the good guys actually do a lot of questionable things and just keep it hidden. It shows the truth and horror about war, that while one side may act like a goody two shoes and the other side is apparently the villain, it's not always as it seems. The game's characters consist of a group of people who have been labelled as criminals by the government, and who are now forced to work in the nameless or risk execution by firing squad. Most of the characters in the squad are there for pretty petty reasons or simply because they either knew too much about certain people or certain events before the war broke out, and now they're seen as a risk and are basically forced into the Nameless squad. Alphonse, for example, used to be a private detective before the war, but it was then found out that he had access to sensitive material without the proper authorization. Because of this, he was sent to the Nameless. Layla was forced into the Nameless due to insubordination, according to her records, but in actuality, it's because she stood up to her commanding officer who was abusing his power and forcing his own troops to do rather questionable things for him. You then have other characters, such as Annika, who were there simply because she defended herself against attackers from her own previous squad. And you generally get a whole host of different characters, with each one having their own background that you find out later on as the game progresses. Some of the characters in the group are essentially there for valid reasons though. Glory, for example, is a prime example, because while she may look like a gentle old lady, she actually used to be a mistress in a brothel. Because of this, she knew where a lot of high up nobles who came to her business establishment, shall we say. 
She also did a tag of smuggling, which really didn't help matters as well. So when she got found out, she basically had a choice of either joining the Nameless or face a firing squad. The difference in all the characters is very well played out, as they're all very different and all very unique. And I have to be honest here and say that they are light years ahead of the cast of Valkyrie Chronicles 2, which I felt was the game's biggest failing, as I found a lot of the cast in that game came across as rather annoying or just plain unlikable by anyone. I also liked how this game dealt with its cast of characters too, because during this game's story you meet the cast in the very first game, and you even assist them in a mission. So you end up meeting Welkin and the others, and assisting them to carry out a mission which ends up with both squads working together alongside each other. You also meet a much younger Yvonne, Colette and Zeri during the game as well, and you get to see what life was like for them during the war, and how the events of this war changed them as people, to the point that they would end up going and enlisting in a military academy down the line in the future. Gameplay The Valkyrie Chronicles 3 is essentially identical to that of the second game. Basically it's a slightly watered down version of the first game's gameplay due to the limitations of the PlayStation Portable itself. The game is practically identical to the gameplay of the second game, in where events are turn based with one side taking around 12 to 14 turns, and then swapping over to the other side for theirs. You can move around on the map for the limit that your meter allows, and then you have a choice of either attacking enemy, or trying to defend by either using sandbags, hiding in tall grass, or using trenches for cover. You also have a tank which is your most powerful weapon, but it is limited in its movement, and it will constantly need upgrading in order to survive the later levels. Your characters also have assigned classes as well, which determines what they are in combat. You have a choice of snipers, gunners, fencers, lancers, and a whole host of various others to choose from. You can also change these classes if you want to swap a character to a different combat style if you so choose. So for example, if I do not want Kurt to be a gunner, I can take him to the training grounds and have him become a sniper or a fencer, or whatever else I choose instead. The game also works on levelling up your characters whenever you can, and also finding as many ace weapons as possible. You also need to work really hard in the game as well to get an S or an A ranking so that you have enough money and experience points to train your characters enough so that they can become elite soldiers later on in the game, because you're really going to be punished for it otherwise. The gameplay itself is good and enjoyable, it is a tad repetitive at times, but I guess it depends on if you like this sort of game to begin with. I don't mind, so it didn't really bother me too much. Essentially, if you have played the first and second game, then you should know what to expect here gameplay wise, it's basically it's still the same working formula. So the graphics for the game. This is also going to be a slight issue due to the limitations of the PSP itself, as basically this device isn't powerful enough to run something such as Valkyrie Chronicles 1 on it. So with the second game's graphics, they did take a slight downgrade because of the limitations of the PSP as well, and the third game also has had a downgrade in its graphics. However, that's not exactly true, because you see, the third game, while not being on the same level as, say for example, the PlayStation 3 or PC version of the first game, still has had an upgrade of sorts in its graphics when compared to the second game. The 3D rendered sprites of the characters all appear much better than that of the second game. The drawn 2D animated sections as well also appear much more crisper and better drawn than how they were in the second game as well. The graphics are still limited however and don't have proper 3D rendered scenes like that of the first game and instead use the same method for telling the story like that of the second game. This is done by having the story play out in a type of comic format. Then when combat happens, the game switches over to 3D rendered models and levels, with the odd video scene thrown here and there. The graphics are improved upon from the second game, and you can tell once you start playing, especially if you have played the second game and then go on to playing this. But still, because of the limits of the PSP itself, these never were going to be the same graphics that you would have gotten from the first game. This is the part where I feel that the game really falters, its environments. You see, basically every level from this game is taken from the second game, 
with only a handful of newer levels actually being made for this game specifically. I do understand why it was done and in a way it does kind of make odd sense because the truth is considering the region it only makes sense that these places would be used for combat in real life as they would hold strategic value. So I do understand why these locations would be used during the war and then later on during the events of the second game, however it just feels like a rather cheap tactic from Sega. Yes, there are several new locations made for the game, and yes, there are added sections added to some previous past levels. However, a lot of the lines shared the levels from this game are all levels from the second game. It's basically just a copy and paste job. The truth is, when I first started playing this game, I didn't really think that I was going to expect to see all levels from the second game in this one. Another annoying thing is that during the game's story, you see a lot of these levels oddly being reused as well, over and over, yet claiming that they're meant to be new locations, which clearly they're not. The new levels that have been put into this game are good, I just wish that there was more of them. Now we come down to the difficult question. Should I buy Valkyria Chronicles 3 for the PSP? And this is the main problem. Unless you live in Japan and speak fluent Japanese, you can't. Sega being Sega, doing more stupid shit that Sega does, Sega decided that they had the brilliant idea of not releasing this game anywhere outside of Japan. Because... reasons. And the thing is, it's just totally retarded now. Because when you look at the game's franchise, you have the first game, the second game, and the fourth game, which were all released worldwide. And then you have the third game, which just seems to be hidden away from the world and kept behind lock and key by Sega. It's almost like releasing Alien, Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, and never releasing Aliens. It's just a bloody stupid thing to do. The only way you can ever play this game with the English translation is to emulate it. And even that is a task upon itself, because actually finding the English patch is problematic at best. You can go onto Google and search for the patch and you get direct to a website that says you can download the patch, but for me personally, every single time I went anywhere near that website, my antivirus went absolutely crazy. I asked a couple of friends to try on their computers and their antiviruses came up as well. So I don't know if it's something with the website or if it's just something with antiviruses itself, but either way, I'm just not going to risk it. Looking for a patched version as well also leads to difficulties too, because it's practically non-existent online, and even then it's really a case of when you do think you've found it, do you trust the place that you're downloading it from? It's just really frustrating because this is an incredible game, and it tells so much of the game's story that you're just not shown in the first, second and fourth. It really changes your perspective of how you view the events of the war and how they play out. Yet Sega just chose not to release this outside of Japan, and it really doesn't make any sense as to why they did this. I just end up feeling so angry and so disappointed in Sega for never releasing an English patched version of this game, because it really does make up for all the faults of the second game and improves on everything in a big way. The patched English version, while not 100% perfect, is still exceptionally good, and the creators of this patch deserve more praise than anyone could possibly give them. This really was a labour of love for them, and I cannot express my gratitude to these guys who did this mod and made it so that we could all enjoy this game in English. They took an epic game that Sega hid away from the world and they released an English patch so that everyone can enjoy it. Words honestly can't express how grateful I am to these guys because I love the Valkyria Chronicles series, and to me this game being hidden away by Sega, it was just a crime. The only thing that I'm a little disappointed about with the guys who did this patch was they didn't do the English translation for any of the DLC. So all you're really getting is in English when you get this game is the main story. I understand it takes these guys a long time to do, and I am grateful that I can play the main story and finally find out what happened. I really do wish that they had a patched DLC though, because it would have been great to find out what happened there too. This really is a fantastic game, and one that you really should look out for. Yes it has its faults, and yes it's got its limitations, but it is so much more better than the second game. It's a brilliant game, and one I hope that many people out there can enjoy especially now with the English patched version, because it is a fantastic game. 
Well, that's it for this for you guys. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and please subscribe.